Hello, World Wide Web. Welcome back to the Hanging With Web Show. I'm GW Pometra. Thank you so much for logging in, tuning in, logging on, however, clicking links. They get the, the internet's full of these, all, every kind of way to get here. Thanks for coming. Now, one more thing, hit subscribe. One more thing after that, smash the bell. I don't know. That's something that my son says all the time. Smash the Smash bell. The bell. It right. gets you notified so you know whenever we've got another author, artist, filmmaker, musician, creative mind of any kind sitting in the chair right here on the Hanging With Web Show. We are here this morning at the Ogali Artworks Art Festival. And we're hanging out with author Mark Lyons. The Only in Florida series. The Only in Florida series. Wow, that's... There are so many things that that that, that is uh, apropos to. Yeah, but these this isn't your basic alligator in the swimming pool kind of stuff. Okay. Is, these are large crimes that could occur in Florida. Haven't really, but they could just because of the uh, you know the characteristics of the state. Okay. Um, example. Well. Now, no spoilers, guys. You got to buy the book to get all of them. But yeah. we're just going to well, try to get this, the first book. The the one that is published so far is called Mosquito Lagoon. And it occurs right here between Mosquito Lagoon and the Spoils Islands of, south of Palm Bay. Okay. And it's specific here because this is a place where the nefarious elements could actually occur because of the climate. Ah. Oh. Uh, the, sec the second book uh, involves something that uh, some people that come from Cuba, you know, in proximity to the state and, you know, the Florida Keys. Oh, wow. So, you know... We do have a an environment that uh, it is rich with possibility for a Absolutely. writer because Absolutely. Uh, we have first of all we have people think of Florida and they kind of conjure up an, a postcard image of our beaches or whatever they don't necessarily realize that we have everything from hill country out in the middle of the state to lake lakes and rivers and, and those kinds of things Absolutely. we have just about every environment in the United States in Florida the only difference is it's more temperate here. Which means that anything that happens anywhere can happen here all year round. Unless you need a big alligator, for instance. Uh, you can't get that just anywhere. But no, no. You have to, there, there, right. is, there are some unique things about our Absolutely. state. How long have you been writing, Mark? Uh, about four years. About four years? Right. I've completed three novels now. Okay. The second, two, or the second and third I plan to publish this year. And what drove you to becoming an author? Well, I mean, there's something in our in, in our DNA as creative writers that that someday, no matter how hard you fight right, it, exactly. you do your engineering job or your business job or your law Absolutely. job, and then one day Absolutely. the writer in the back of your head goes, "Hey, write a book, write a book, write a well, book." Well, all these things that build up over the course of a lifetime, you know, all these strange occurrences, and you think, well, you know, I ought to write a book, but most of the time there's not enough right there to do it. But yeah. Over the course of the lifetime, you do accumulate a lot of stuff. And um, if you're somewhat creative, sometimes you take those surprise elements and you kind of fill in the middle and maybe exaggerate a little bit. I write only fiction. The writer's favorite question, guys, is what if? Right, exactly. So here's three exactly. circumstances, Absolutely. and then the writer says, what Absolutely. if these things could happen in no between? No question, no question. And, yeah. and in my books, of course, there's this little bit of element. I, my brother-in-law says this isn't science fiction, so... I tend to call it science possible. I take real facts and kind of stretch them just a little bit so that there's, you know, um, it's something that hasn't really happened, but it makes you think, could this have happened? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's primarily the case in Mosquito Lagoon. Wow. A, so it, this is your, you said fourth novel, you have four novels? No, the, this is the first. I, I have uh, three. I'm working on the fourth one, okay. but three are completed. I, this is the only one published. The other two are coming. Okay. Um, the second is um, He Who Brings Death, and that'll be published in the spring. Oh, wow. And the third is the Whittingham Hospital for the Criminally Insane. And everybody knows that's not going anywhere good. <laughs> now they all have a little dark side. Yeah. You know, I mean, we look at, you know, we look at this book and this dark cover, you know, this is Florida. Everything's, you know, happy in bikinis and bright colors and, and not you know, theme parks and things. And this is dark old thing. Of course, we're talking about murder here, so. Which is the dark subject. It's I, sort of dark. You, yeah. It's kind of on the dark side. You know, yeah. with all the things and the games and everything that people see on the internet these days, right. they're like, murder? Ah, that's only a But you know yeah. what? Oh, you yeah. dive into one of these books because the environment is, is dark. and it's Absolutely. And, Absolutely. Um, it, it's, in, um, it's incredible. So much of our storytelling revolves around our own darker instincts. Do you as, think so? It, I think what does that <laughs> is the fact that we think we take things that are in the extreme absolutely but in the extreme we can all look at a character good guy bad guy antagonist protagonist 
and see bits of ourselves. Ooh, no I could see my, no can, I be, can I be pushed far enough to murder? Can I be pushed far enough to, you know, in my life? And I think answering that question is one of the writer's most fun things, is, you know, making a bad guy. Well, it really is. You know, in this book in particular, um, one of my real life heroes has a character that is similar to him in this book. And the protagonist follows this person. He said, oh, he can't be guilty of anything. He loves this guy. You know, he's just, you know, he's always been somebody he's looked up to. But in the end, mm. we find out a little bit more about this. A little bit more, yeah. yeah. And, and, and we all have that, that dark seed in the back of our mind somewhere. Question. If you're smart, exercise it creatively. Write a book. Yeah. Uh, that would be better for everybody involved. But it's there. And when we can see ourselves in a protagonist or in an antagonist, right. it is, it, it's, it's evocative to us. And that's why people, I think, continue to read. Well, How, what are readers saying so far? Well, well y'all you know, are liking the book enough so that he's writing three more. Right. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's out just recently, so there haven't been a huge number of readers. But um, those that have read it and gotten back to me really like it. They like the fact that it moves around. I mean, it moves along quickly, and there's a lot of really interesting elements. You know, it was kind of curious because I, um, since I've written two complete books after this one, and I like those so much better, my I felt like my writing ability has improved so much. I was actually thinking of pulling this off of the shelf. Oh wow! And readers were like, "What?" Well, then I got then I won this uh, this award, this um, darn Argo award, just about a month ago. And yes. Thought, All right. Well, maybe I'm not judging my own work as well as I it, it's so almost it's kind of it's kind of odd you know? it is almost impossible to judge your first work it's because tough, you um, you know the, the the writer in you has always been there so the book is is good right and and everything you but, do is you're being critical of your own stuff so. and but you but you do every book you write every paragraph you write you get to be a better writer yeah. and so you look back at that first book and you see something that stands apart as not as good as your current work at the same time your readers see something that when there wasn't a you there was nothing to compare it to, so I'll they keep look that at it. In mind. That's, that's <laughs> there wasn't a you to compare it's it to before. Me up. I'm feeling yeah. better here. And I, I, I look back at. Uh, I actually go back to. I have a my first book is in its uh, third edition, because I did go back when I could afford to. I went back and got a, a good editor, and then when I could afford a little bit more, I had a story editor look at it and you know help me structure a little bit better. Yeah. And uh, so it's in its third edition. It's the same story um, that I initially wanted to tell. But when I go back and look at that first edition, when I go back and look at the day I hit publish, what a remarkable yeah, difference yeah. between that and now five books later. And yeah. saying, oh, wow, the, my skill, my pace, the, the, you know, with the help of that story editor who showed me, okay, there are different ways to go to get to the same place yes, and bring yes. your readers along for the ride. Yes. With, the, with that help, I found that it is remarkable. You, you almost could say, why did I publish that? And then you think, oh, wait, because I had a story to tell. Right, exactly, and exactly. And plus, you have to get your feet wet. Absolutely. You have to do it. You have to just jump in and do it. If you don't do it, you can sit and just think You'll about be, it for the rest of your life. And, really. and since you published, I, I, you probably noticed that uh, you are surrounded by people now that were, and I quote, going to write a book once. Absolutely. And, and you, you, when you don't publish, you take the risk of being one of those guys. Absolutely. Because every, when you publish, oh, yes. when you publish for a book, all of your friends all of a sudden are like, oh, you did a book, that's great. I was going to do a book once. And, but they didn't. Or they have a manuscript they, buried in their dresser behind their socks or something, and they, I say, get it out and do it. Just do it. So what? Yeah, what do you have to lose? Either they like it or they don't like right, it. Right. And the nice thing about the They'll market today on the Internet is they get to decide. Right, right. Because you can push publish. They can decide what they want to read, when they want to read it. They don't have to wait for five guys in, in Manhattan to tell them right. this is a book that you right, can read. Right, right. So um, we uh, love to ask our writers, especially our writers who are breaking into this for the first time in the last four years, um, favorite writing rituals do you have a place that you like to go to write do you have a, a room in the house where you go a study or a well, library mostly or my recliner your recliner oh, just right, kick I, back I, right I, I like to get my feet up in the air and put the laptop there and uh, just keep it quiet sometimes I have the television on with the sound muted okay you know so it doesn't take me away very far but I can always look up and see if the president's done something silly or you know it needs to be it's likely <laughs> yeah it's it like, happens quite uh, a few times during the course of a day a but, day yeah right. <laughs> but still but that's the that's the place I go. I haven't really been able to write anywhere else. Uh huh. You know, I've tried it at the table and things, but I'm just not. I, I can't flow. do the formality of you know, kind yeah. of my desk chair and what I, right. I have to relax and get the thing. I, I like a little music. Yeah. Um, so, um, 
now these are very this this book in particular is very florida centric yes it takes absolutely. place all around florida or whatever some probably some great landmarks people are going to recognize no right no away questions. um in your research you're uh, you're from florida uh, i'm from minnesota i've been here about 15 years though that's from florida Oh, oh, that's yeah. everybody. Uh, that, if you yeah. cut us in I half, think, I'm I think there idea. actually is a such thing of a native Floridian. They're hard to find. It's, yeah, it's really, are. really difficult, but there are. Uh, however, uh, being from Florida and things like that, what was the most interesting thing that you didn't know that you found out in your research while you were, while you were setting the story? Uh, the most interesting thing I didn't know. Mm. There's always that tidbit hidden where you're like, this is a great setting for a story. And then you find out, oh, Indians massacred somebody there. I didn't know that yet. So there's always that little thing. What was the most interesting thing you found? Well, I had a few geographical problems with actually with Mosquito Lagoon because I I spent a lot of time in in boats on the uh, Indian River. But most of it was to the south of here. Uh Uh-huh. But Mosquito Lagoon, by the name of it, is the name is important to the book and to the story. So also I really had the to, area, I really, by the way, for those of you that don't know, Melbourne, the harbor city, was once, uh, this was once considered Mosquito County. Yes, yes, uh, And Melbourne was in the heart of that. Because right, of, right. Now, Melbourne is referred to in this, but it's called Harbor City in this harbor book. Harbor City, okay. so, you know, it's, it's the nickname of Melbourne. Yep. Current nickname. Yeah, it was, absolutely. And I think a lot of the mosquitoes that came here are probably from some of these spoils islands. <laughs> uh, you know, because they all have a freshwater pond in the center of them. The, mm. the river is brackish, but... The inland ponds, you know, trees growing around, birds nesting there, and mosquitoes are, are thick. Are called, oh, yeah. Covers I, the sun I, uh, and you're just inundated with them. When I was in college, I had a, uh, a professor who was native to this area who had grown up here from a childhood. Yeah. And she said, you know, she remembers going to her grandparents' uh, house pre-AC and pre-mosquito control. And she said, you know, everybody had screen doors on their porches and stuff right. so they could let the air blow through their house. And she said, you'd go out around 7 o'clock at night and put your hand on the, on the screen. And when you pulled your hand away, there would be a handprint of mosquitoes because they're attracted to the heat. So it was, and that was every house everywhere because we didn't have mosquito control and we didn't have, you know, all the things we have in And now Atlanta. if one gets in the house, you're driven to kill it. Oh, I my Lord. Live, you know? I've seen, I've seen, and children, amazingly. These are, you know, this teacher was telling me this was her childhood hobby right and if my kid sees a mosquito in the house right you know, his mind is blown oh yeah absolutely it's some well, kind I'm of, not too crazy about it myself no but uh, it's like living in they think they're inside of a national right. geographic no uh, horror story at that point right absolutely. so um, the this is uh, only in Florida this is book one yeah only in Florida mosquito lagoon mosquito yes. lagoon and then you have the other book is coming right yeah only and, in Florida um, he who brings death. Okay. El que trae la muerte. Cuban connection. Awesome. Uh, and you have two more that you're working on. Yeah, the, out. the fourth one hasn't been named yet. I'm okay. just getting started on it. But the third one is only in Florida, the Whittingham Hospital for the Criminally, Criminally insane. insane. What more can you say? We're going to put links down below to Mark and all of his work, guys. We've been hanging out for the last few minutes with Mark Lyons, the author of the Only in Florida series. Check it out. Check out the links down below. In the meantime, let's thank our partners and friends at Famous Faces and the Funnies, Krypton Radio, Space Coast Comics, our good friends at Indie Originals, and our great friends at Helping Others of Central Florida B and her crew over there, as well as our great friend Josh Bauer at J. Bauer Art. He provided all of the art for our set this weekend. We are at the O'Galley Artworks Art Festival in the historical art district of O'Galley in Melbourne, Florida. It's a weird thing. There's a history there. It's about a 50-year history. When you get it all cleaned up, we're downtown. We're having a good time. We're hanging out with artists. So stay tuned in and stay logged on to see who we're hanging with next. Awesome. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thanks, awesome Garrett. job. Appreciate it.